Hi everybody, my name is Susanna Tolini and I am here today to do my project for the edX course I've been taking with Harvard on the science of food and cooking from whole cuisine to soft matter. The project that I've chosen to focus on is making a traditional whipped cream and then making another whipped cream with a modernist thickener which is carrageenan and then compare the two side by side for the, mo for the elastic modulus and to see how they, they work and the tension over time. So what I have in here is my whipped cream and I'm going, this is my traditional whipped cream and I'm going to go ahead and make this and at the end of making this I'm going to show you what the soft peaks are falling off the whip and then I'm going to do the same thing with my whipped cream that's made with the carrageenan. Once I've done that then I'm going to show you how I've taken my measurements to, to uh, determine my elastic modulus over here and then from there I'm going to go and show you how I've generated the elastic modulus and the difference between the two of the traditional and the carrageenan. So let's get started on the whipped cream. So the whipped cream is done and this took a minute and 27 seconds to do and to make it and here what I want to show you is are that the the soft peaks that have developed as a result of the whipping. So the whipping is done by mechanical action of the whipped cream and essentially what's happening is that air is caught into, the little air bubbles are caught creating little spheres that are in, uh, encapsulated or surrounded by fat, fat globules that coalesce around it. And so that has created a lot of volume here and you can see um, that the whipped cream has almost created twice as much volume as when I originally started. So you can see these soft peaks that are hanging off my whip and when I make the next whipped cream which is made with carrageenan then we can try to compare or we basically in size we'll, we'll see the difference between the two how long they are but from an earlier measurement that I took this measurement right here was 35 millimeters that was that was the length of my my whipped cream foam um, my trails that are hanging off of here so I'm going to go ahead now and just transfer it over to this other bowl So the, as this comes out of here, the texture is really kind of a velvety, soft, luxurious texture, soft texture of whipped cream. And to make whipped cream, the fat content of the cream needs to be 35 to 40 percent for this whole process to even take place. And uh, um, the, the heavy cream in and of itself is an emulsion, so what really makes whipped cream very interesting is that it, it is both an emulsion and a foam at the same time. Put that back on there and we'll get started with the next one. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my whipped cream with the carrageenan. And the carrageenan is a polysaccharide, so those are, that's long chains, long chain polysaccharide. And what it's going to do is stabilize the whipped cream. Um, but because it's so hygroscopic, what I've done is I've dissolved it in a little bit of the heavy cream first so that I don't get these big, like, just lumps or bubbles of carrageenan when I put it all together. So that process is already done and I'm going to start to whip this but one of the thing that um, using the carrageenan has done is it's helped to reduce the amount of time it takes to whip. So the traditional whipped cream took a minute and 27 seconds and the, and the whipped cream with the carrageenan takes a minute and 20 seconds. So here we go. Ready here. Okay, so now I can, I can tell by looking at this whipped cream that it's done. There's, there's large air pockets that are forming on the surface, and I see ribbons in here that are actually really, you know, they're really firm and they're holding up on themselves. So this tells me that this whipped cream is done with the carrageenan. Now what I want to do for you is just give you an example of the soft peaks as they come off of the uh, of the whip itself. And you can see that this has created a much bigger space. It almost looks like a beard, if you will. It's really hanging long. And in my earlier measurements, it was almost twice as long as a traditional. It was about 65 millimeters in length from the tip to here. So already I can see that I'm creating a firmer and more stable whipped cream to work with, a, whip, a whipped cream topping that's really going to last a long time. So my next step with the project 
is going to be sh to show you how I took my measurements to to set up for my elastic modulus and we'll move along I'm gonna put this into a piping bag and then we'll get started with that so that let me just take this off of here and I'll get my piping bag and that that looks like that's good for now so what I have here are the two whipped creams that I've made, the traditional straightforward whipped cream and the whipped cream made with carrageenan. And if you just take a close look at the way these, the characteristic of the way these creams look in the bowl, the traditional whipped cream uh, is more spread out in the bowl and really almost filling it all in. And the carrageenan whipped cream uh, has not filled out in the bowl, but is even almost coming into a higher shape, if you will. And I can, I can really tell by looking at it that it, that it is already becoming firmer. And what I'm gonna do is just take my spoon and you know, a lot of times it's, it's with like feeling the ingredient, manipulating it, that you get an idea as to how things like carrageenan are really working. And so I can feel that there's, I mean, you can almost see that there's a little bit more of, a, of an all around texture to this and a little bit more glean or glisten that I'm getting from the light. So, the next thing I'm going to do after we're done with this is move on to show you how I took some measurements to create, to, to come up with the numbers for my elastic modulus. But what I ultimately want to do with my whipped cream is set it on top of this warm liquid right here. So you may know that oftentimes whipped cream is used on something like um, hot chocolate or it could be some other kind of you know coffee or tea that you get at a coffee shop. So, so this is a warm liquid right here, and I've taken the diameter, the opening right here, to use as a model to measure, to start my measure for my, for my elastic modulus. So we'll move along with that as well. Okay. Now I'm just gonna fill this piping bag with whipped cream. The one thing about carrageenan or when you use anything like this is that um, because of its properties, uh, it continues to work with time and so what you get in the beginning is not always the final texture that you get in the end. And what I have here is a little diagram which is the opening the diameter of this cup that this rosette of cream will act will eventually rest on top and what I'm going to do is just measure the amount of weight that would that fills up this space right here and now I have my weight on my scale and then to that I am going to take a measurement so I'm going to measure it right off the top over here. And this particular top is measuring 60 millimeters, so I would record that. And then when I add my force to it, just for a second, I would come back and I would measure again and I'm getting a measurement of about 58 millimeters. So my change in the height or my delta, my delta L, my delta height is two millimeters. So that eventually would go into my formulation. So the next thing I'm gonna do is take you over and show you how I created the elastic modulus for the whipped cream, um, the difference between the, the traditional and the, the, the carrageenan and the modernist thickener. So here we are at the height of the project here, the important, the important moment which is to discuss our equation and the measurement of our elastic modulus and for that we should all clap. So we'll give a little clap for this. So you saw earlier, I showed, I gave you an example earlier of how I had measured my rosette or dollop of whipped cream which is going to go on the hot, the hot tea and I have made I outlined that as if it's a cylinder and then from that I have my took my height and then I put my weights on top which created force and I took a before and after measurement and I wound up with my delta height which was the change in the force and so my stress equals the elastic modulus times the strain and the strain is the change in the height or the delta height over the height 
the elastic modulus equals the force divided by the area over the delta height divided by the height. And what we have come up with for our final, of our final formulation, that the traditional whipped cream has 193 pascals and the carrageenan has 246 pascals. And when you ask yourself, the question is, does this make sense? I think it makes perfect sense because I showed you that that the uh, traditional whipped cream seemed a little bit softer than the carrageenan whipped cream. What I have here to show you are actually examples of the whip the whipped creams that I've made put under a microscope. And there is a height, uh, the, or the size of these bubbles is 100 micron. And in the traditional whipped cream, we, you see a lot, you see a lot of very large air bubbles. And these, this field around here is fat that is coalescing around. And when it coalesces around, it doesn't mean that it's going to hold that whip forever. It's not a strong force. Over here, or a strong bind, if you will, over here what's happened is we see some large bubbles, but we have a field of mostly sp small bubbles. And it's as if what's happened in that whipping, w when we whipped with the carrageenan, that the, the carrageenan, the polysaccharide, got in there and it worked it up and it broke up some of those bubbles. Um, and now we have a lot of field around all those bubbles, which is actually the cream, uh, the head, the fat, and the water that's in the fat that is held together by the carrageenan, the polysaccharides. And this is all, one of the things that we talked about was a random walk, and this is all just surrounding all those little bubbles in the, in the form of, of a random walk itself. And it's actually heavier than it is over here. We've broken up that field and it's made it heavier. And I have a great, more examples here to show you from whipped cream that I made yesterday. This is a traditional whipped cream, and what you can see right here is that the it's already started, it, it's weeping, it's not holding a, as a firm whipped cream. And over here, the carrageenan whipped cream looks as if it's, it's almost sitting up, as if it's almost like a, a butter in and of itself. So now that we've talked about that, I want to go and show you a little bit more about the elastic modulus of a foam or an emulsion. So the elastic modulus is the surface tension over the droplet, droplet radius times the dispersed phase divided by the volume fraction minus the crit, critical volume fraction. And that is showing that the tension or the, the, or how the thickness, the, the density of the cream is inversely proportionate to, this, to the bubble size. And you can see within this carrageenum right here that we've got lots of little bubbles in this field. And with all of that, all of that carrageenum around and that polysaccharide chain that just continues to work, it's created a much stiffer whipped cream that is with the carrageenum. So now what I'm going to do is just to finish off the project for today, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pipe my creams, my carrageenan and my traditional on top of my warm fluid, my warm tea here, just to get it, just to give you an example of, of how they pipe and see the differences between the two. And one of the things I've always noticed with the carrageenan is because it's firmer, it wants, initially it just wants to run right down into the warm cream. And now we'll get to see the difference with the, with the traditional and you if you had noticed that it floated right up top initially. But um, I think that in conclusion, this shows you the, a good difference between using carrageenan and your whipped cream to make it more stable, um, or just working with a straight whipped cream um, for a more immediate use. So thank you for being part of my video today. I hope you've enjoyed it and you'll be making some whipped cream soon. Thanks so much.